Good morning to those of us connecting from Jamaica, from the Caribbean region, from Europe. It is a pleasure to be with you today. Honorable Olivia Babsy Grange, MPCD, Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sports. Honorable Alando Terralong, Minister of State, Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport. Minister Councillor Frederick Eckfeldt, Deputy Head of Mission, Delegation of the European Union to Jamaica, Belize, the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, and the Cayman Islands. Excellencies, members of the European delegation, the team from the Cultural Relations Platform, our very special guests on the opening panel, and those who will be participating in the closed sessions, our partners, our moderators, every participant and witness of this, our first in the series of Connect the Dot events from here in the Caribbean, Europe and beyond. Welcome. <clears throat> a quick introduction. I'm a co-consultant of the NOC project and director of strategy and projects of Comidii, Culture and Media Agency Europe, a nonprofit consultancy working at the heart of Brussels, supporting the strengthening of the cultural and creative industry sector in Europe and beyond. I'm also a Jamaican, uh, a proud Jamaican. Okay, so this session seeks to support connecting the dots while promoting synergies that support a stronger enabling environment for collaboration of Kingston's creatives in and around the Kingston and San Andrew metropolitan area nationally, regionally, and with EU stakeholders. This includes knowledge sharing and engagement with EU stakeholders interested in collaborating with Jamaican creatives. About the project. Kingston Networks of Culture is an activity of the European Union funded project, the Cultural Relations Platform of the Service for P Foreign Policy Instruments of the European Commission, Brussels, Belgium. A project that directly supports international cultural relations and cooperation between European and global cultural and creative sectors. The NOC activity, is gathering, elaborating, and disseminating research on creatives' presence in Kingston, Jamaica, and their added value. NOC seeks to identify EU stakeholders interested in collaborating with Jamaican cultural actors. The research team is led by Dr. Deborah Hicklin Gordon, and it is my pleasure to invite Dr. Hicklin Gordon to take the microphone at this point um, and to give opening remarks on behalf of the research team. Thank you. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is my privilege to reach you this morning from Kingston, Jamaica, a creative city of music, a complex arterial network where much music and merry are made amidst the varied complexities of urban life in this small island developing state. Your presence here today is an indication of the importance you place on the development of the Jamaican and by extension Caribbean cultural and creative ecosystem. We thank you for the energy you bring to this process. In Jamaica, we say thank you for your strength. These days, we all have many choices and ours on this Tuesday morning or afternoon, depending on where you are, is making Kingston's networks of culture a priority. 
As Stephanie said, it's the first in a series of events to link up, to connect the dots between the networks of culture in Europe and the networks of culture here in Jamaica. Ours is a nation where folk practice meets classical instruction, where performance and publishing meet contemporary production and presentation. In this cultural ecosystem, particularly in our focal area of city Kingston, recording and dance studios, some formal and some that make do, music video locations, fashion and street food niches, conservatories, orchestras and choral movements, coexist with dance hall ecosystems. And in this city, there are innovative 21st century digital shared spaces and creatives with no spaces. It's a complex, integrated, cultural and creative ecosystem where multi-talented creative workers multitask across cultural and creative subsectors, industries, institutions, and enterprises, many of which remain undefined and unclassified. And this is precisely the function of the networks of, of culture team, to seek to systematically provide a mapped understanding of this space. The European Union, through the Cultural Relations Platform, has engaged the research duo in the persons of Stephanie Thomas Gilbert Roberts, a young Jamaican-based dancer, artist, and strategist who lives in Brussels, and myself, an old filmmaker, now researcher, to seek to explore the um, cultural ecosystem of Kingston and to literally connect the dots. Most of us know anecdotally that there is an increased emerging trend of intermediary organizations supporting creative workers, more grants and facilitation activities than ever before, individual initiatives, significantly more training at all levels for those interested in honing their skills, and therefore more individuals with competencies and interests and interest in the cultural and creative sectors than ever before. With thanks to the ministry and their partner, the European delegation, we hope to connect as many dots as we can, as we seek within a holistic, sustainable framework to gather data on the changes taking place in the sector and to use this information to influence um, policy, the policy process. In working through the process, I met with Minister Grange. She charged me with two things to as best we can meet the creatives where they are. I assured her that every element of this process from the social media engagement to these initial small meetings and your participation to our entry into the select communities of Kingston and St. Andrew for pilot field work and our grand final event in March, we seek to do just that. Minister Grange also emphasized the need for cohesion across the proliferation of Jamaican creative projects, products and services being produced, shared and traded locally and internationally. A little about the process Stephanie and I call Net Networks of Culture designed specifically for cultural and creative industries mapping in cultural countries of the global south. It takes into account the social, economic, and political contexts and nuances of a country's cultural economy, in this case, Jamaica's, a definition drawn from our guest and panelist, Dr. Kim Marie Spence. For the pilot activity, Kingston's network of called culture, we call it KNAC, we built on existing cultural and creative industries mapping efforts completed through the JBDC. That process has now moved into the economic assessment phase. We've done consultations with a wide variety of practitioners who intimately understand the architecture of Jamaica's cultural and creative industries, and this will support upcoming fieldwork. We're linking in with the Ministry of Culture and other ministries, departments, and agencies of government to ensure that we have the most up-to-date research. We've also established linkages with partners in City Kingston who are already connecting the dots. This process, process is not exhaustive, and we welcome creative teams to make contact with us and to stand and be counted.
We've also included systems and processes developed by regional, um, regional partners, including Dr. Marielle Barrow, and um, her systems will be used for co-creation in the exercise later today. We'll be using this information to um, in, in today's small focus group um, futuring sessions to develop case studies. And as the minister and EU delegation ambassador have bid us, we're also finding creatives where they are as part of a cascading data collection process led by a group of young people who know where the creative activity is. So the very design of this project sought to engender partnerships and engage knowledge, an integral principle of our dot creating exercise. And we start at home, linking European creative people, spaces and interests with those in Jamaica to discuss how EU and Jamaican creative stakeholders can add value and engage with each other. And it's at this point that I welcome Minister Councillor Frederick Eckfield of the European delegation to bring remarks followed immediately by Minister Honorable Olivia Babsey Grange, who will also bring remarks. Minister Councillor Eckfeld, will you join us? I'm here, Madam Chair. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you so, so much. I appreciate it. Uh, let me first express my, um, my warm greetings to uh, Honorable uh, Minister Olivia Babsi Grange, uh, a, a true partner of the European Union delegation. We work closely with one another, so pleased to see her again. Um, also, of course, uh, the Honorable Alando uh, Terlonge, State Minister um, uh, in the same Ministry of uh, Culture and Gender uh, and uh, Entertainment and Sports. Uh, we also partner closely with the minister. Um, nice to see you again, sir. Uh, friends of culture, please, good morning. Uh, I'm here uh, because my ambassador, um, uh, Marianne van Steen, uh, is currently uh, meeting uh, the government of uh, Belize. She's in Belize, so it's my privilege to uh, be here uh, instead of her. Uh, and. Uh, Please believe that it's a true pleasure because I associate myself very much with the importance of culture and uh, I am delighted to be here. So, as we know, Jamaica has a rich heritage in the culture and creative industries. In fact, Jamaica's culture ranks amongst the most fascinating in the world as evidenced, for instance, by the designation of Kingston as a creative city by UNESCO in 2015. European Union is strongly engaged in international cultural relations with programs supporting the culture sector in partner countries. European Union also fosters cultural cooperation as it strongly contributes to intercultural dialogue, conflict prevention, reconciliation and resilience. That is why today European Union in Jamaica is supporting Kingston Networks of Culture through the Culture Relations Platform. Kingston Networks of Culture is part of a global project that directly supports international cultural relations and cooperations between European and global cultural and creative sectors. Three events will be staged in Kingston in February and March with the first one standing today. The events will bring together Jamaican and European Union cultural and creative stakeholders interested in collaborative activities. It is widely known that with the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic over the past two years, the culture and creative sector has experienced significant challenges. It's probably an euphemism the cultural sector has suffered tremendously. Financial inclusion and access to finance for creative practitioners are major challenges that impede the growth and sustainability of Jamaican culture and creative industries. Trust me, in Europe, we know what you're talking about. Our filmmakers have been held back. 
the directors of theaters have been trying to rehearse their plays and had to postpone several times and not knowing how to pay their troupe. Expositions were never held. Young, talented artists who were about to break through didn't have the chance to do so. But now the world is waiting. Every nation is full of people waiting to come back to see magnificent artists performing either through music, through theater, paintings, and so on. So we are standing here at the crucial moment of time. There are industry professionals who have difficulty convincing funders and investors in the value of their work. But other challenges, such as improving the status of the artist and the integration of creativity and digital technology also exist. That is why the European Union wants to address some of these issues by improving the means by which industry stakeholders in Europe and Jamaica can collaborate on projects, trade, and engage in culture exchange. In line with, with its consensus on development, the European Union has included activities in the field of culture in much of its development work. Under the multi-annual financial framework for the preceding period, 2014 to 2020, the European Union invested 53 billion Jamaican dollars, the equivalent of 53 billion Jamaican dollars on actions aimed at developing cultural partnerships and cooperation, particularly via the development cooperation instrument, the European neighborhood instrument, the European Development Fund and Horizon 2020. Funding comes from several programs at the global level. Jamaica is benefiting from some programs granted for the Caribbean, such as the African Caribbean Pacific EU Cultural Program with a budget of 532 million Jamaican dollars. Transcultura, a program for cooperation on cultural heritage in the Caribbean, 15 million U, uh, European U, U, Union um, euros were uh, allocated to this, which is in Jamaican dollars, 2.7 billion. Direct support in Jamaica through the EU UNESCO expert facility for the creation and activation of the Creative Economic Act which will be a game-changing instrument. I would like to commend the government of Jamaica, as well as various culture and creative practitioners here in Jamaica and abroad for the steady interest and commitment to creating a robust and resilient culture and creative ecosystem. I wish you all the best for this and the upcoming events, and I hope the discussions will be of great value and produce fabulous results. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Mr. Councillor Eckfeld. We now invite Honorable Olivia Babsy Grange to take the floor. Minister, you need to unmute. You're muted, Minister. Minister, your mic is not open. Ah, so sorry about that. All right. Hope everyone is feeling good this morning or this afternoon or wherever you are. <laughs> My Minister of State, Honorable Alanda Terrellon, Your Excellency, Ambassador Simone Betoneo, Head of the Jamaican Mission to the EU. 
Minister Councillor Frederick Eckfeld, Deputy Head of Mission, Delegation of the European Union to Jamaica. Lead consultant here in Kingston, Dr. Deborah Hicklin Gordon, co consultant based in Brussels, Mrs. Stephanie Thomas Gilbert Roberts, Ms. Ayal Kasasa from ACP, Dr. Roberta Communian of King's College London, Ms. Lena Ingwersen of the Music Cities Network and Dr. Kim Marie Spence and Ms. Rosanna Moda, additional members of the home team. Long salutation and to all those who have not mentioned, greetings. As we recover from the effects of a global pandemic, one that has taken some of our beloved icons and adversely impacted the livelihoods of the people who produce, perform, consume and enjoy the exchange of culture activities. It is good to be together this morning or at this time. Here in Jamaica, we celebrate Reggae Month. February is Reggae Month. The longest reggae festival, the longest in terms of being a month long reggae festival in the world. Coming from Kingston, the creative city of music, and I certainly invite the world to join us virtually to come catch the reading. Some of you may have started preparations for either Reggae Sun Fest 2022 here in Jamaica or Rotterdam 22 Sunsplash in Spain or both. What better testimony of Reggae's resilience than both festivals planning to reopen their stages in 2022? It is an important sign of hope and recovery that will have a positive impact here in Jamaica and in Europe. The planned return of the two festivals is an optimistic indicator and welcome sign of vibrant life for the entertainment, cultural and creative ecosystems that connects the people of Jamaica and the European Union. This EU Jamaica link up is one that has remained strong, rooted in a mutually beneficial collaboration between us and our international partners. The very intention of this EU Jamaica stakeholder exchange is for us to move forward with the development of a clear agenda to welcome more people from Europe to Jamaica shores, to enjoy our culture, to do business in our entertainment and cultural and creative industries, the ECCI, and for us to visit Europe for both increased levels of business as well as leisure and pleasure. The spirit of cooperation is clearly demonstrated through this event, the first of three to be staged as a part of the Connect the Dots series of themed culture linkups under the Kingston networks of culture activity. Bringing Kingston as a creative city into sharp focus through dedicated research is particularly important as the government of Jamaica seeks to reopen and as Prime Minister, the most honorable Andrew Oldes has said and has been urging recently that we get back to business. We know that the process of connecting the dots is a difficult task. One that must take into account the complexities of the Jamaican and by extension, the Caribbean ECCI. Importantly, however, is that the research has been designed to be inclusive through the development of a culturally specific research methodology mix. I look forward to the additional results you will all bring to the table. A welcome compliment to the policy and legislative work being advanced by my ministry. As part of my ministry's thrust to solidify an enabling environment for the ECCI, our plan is to complete the ECCI policy and legislation in this Jamaica's 60th year of independence. In fact, we have been actively establishing sustainable linkages. A little over a week ago, Ministers of Culture and Permanent Secretaries in the Caribbean gave a very strong 
response to our call to create a caucus of CARICOM ministers of culture. We united, we are united in the belief that this will serve to secure the needed wins for the ECCI and our respective economies. We are aware that the orange economy is the fastest growing sector worldwide and is the key to our attainment of our sustainable development goals, the SDGs in the post pandemic era. The National Entertainment, Cultural and Creative Industries Council, which we call Jamaica Creative within my ministry, just last week hosted the inaugural Jamaica Creative Career Expo Kingston, where students and young creatives benefited from first-hand knowledge and experience of industry professionals. This event was a resounding success. Additionally, my ministry, the EU and UNESCO have been working together on the five, on five major projects for Jamaica and the Caribbean, which I oversee as chair of the Jamaica National Commission for UNESCO. One, the, the first is the development of the ECCI legislation mentioned earlier, which is being coordinated by the ECCI focused unit in my ministry, the Jamaica Creative Unit. The development of this legislation is led by an activity funded by the EU and facilitated by UNESCO through its expert facility on cultural governance. The second important EU UNESCO project currently taking place in the region is the Transcultura, which focuses on training and capacity building. Three, in the meantime, research continues through the Jamaica Business Development Corporation and UNESCO to develop the economic impact assessment for the sector. And four, the network of culture project is a fourth project which has built on the mapping research produced last year and focuses on facilitating the EU slash Jamaica exchange research and technical policy support. And five, the Creative Caribbean is the fifth EU ACP UNESCO activity, which will be launched this year and focuses on strengthening the capacity of creatives through grants and other projects. That is just wonderful, the work and the projects that we are working on. I want to thank the EU and also UNESCO for their role in facilitating this well-needed technical and capacity building support for Jamaica and the wider Caribbean in support of the cultural and creative ecosystem. It is important that it translates into meaningful outcomes that every creative person can see and feel. My ministry is committed to creating the framework necessary to bring value to all creative Jamaicans. Finally, I want to welcome everyone who has joined this process, which is geared towards establishing the framework for collaboration and sustainable links between European and Jamaican cities and creatives. I look forward to the rich engagement that is to come the collaborative opportunities and outcomes which will spring from this process. And thanks our host for the continuing engagement and support. Reggae Month continues, so please participate in as many activities as you can. It's all virtual. It's hybrid actually. We have small audiences and we go virtually to the world. You will see that our calendar in as much as it is designed to entertain, continues the work of connecting the dots, showcasing our music diversity, flexibility, range and depth, and focuses on the development and sustainability of the ECCIs. I know everyone present here are passionate, you are all passionate about our entertainment, culture, and creative industries sector. 
And I know that passion and the work will yield great results. I thank you so much. Blessings. And may you have a very successful uh, in, connecting the dots as we go forward today. Thank you so much and blessings. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister Olivia Grange and Minister Councillor Eckfeld. Thank you for bringing such thoughtful and heartfelt greetings. We are encouraged by this commitment uh, for engagement to harness the true potential of the cultural and creative industries. We are definitely ready for Catch the Rhythm. <laughs> we will go directly to the opening panel discussion titled Towards Sustainable Creative Cities, Lessons for and from Kingston. Considering best practices in infrastructure development, funding, policy, and the artist. It is my pleasure to introduce the panelists, starting with Honorable Alando Terrilong, Minister of State in the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment, and Sports. Her Excellency Ambassador Simone Betonayo, Head of Jamaica's Mission to the European Union. Mr. Gian Giuseppe Simone, international expert in culture and development, team leader of the ACP EU Culture Technical Assistance Unit. Ms. Rosina Modier, founder and executive director of the Music Unites Jamaica Foundation. Dr. Roberta Comunion, reader in creative economy, King's College London, with a strong focus on creative economies in Africa. Ms. Lena Ingwersen, Managing Director, Music Cities Network. And last but not least, Dr. Kim Marie Spence, Lecturer, Queen's University, Belfast, author of Global Creative Economy and Director of Kingston Creative. It is, it is a pleasure <laughs> to introduce the panels who will establish the framework for collaboration and sustainable links between European and Jamaican cities and amongst EU and Jamaican creatives, while sharing topical knowledge primarily from the European and Jamaican spaces, considering also South-South comparisons, models, or elements of models that have been shown to drive the development of sustainable creative cities, considering best practices in infrastructure development, involvement of diaspora communities, funding policy, and the status of the artist. So without further ado, I invite the Honorable Alanda Terlong to give a brief introduction. Hi, good morning. Thank you so much. Um, good morning to everyone. Um, I would, I, 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 well, I know the introductions have, have gone already, but I cannot not come on and not say a special good morning to our senior minister of minister greens and of course to our to our eu ambassador who is who is who, who is deputized this morning ambassador friedrich this morning um and of course to you our hosts um this morning and all our all our guests um who are present and of course ambassador ambassador who is my dear colleague um who is in brussels as well uh, not just colleague but neighbor as well but that's for another time um, so, uh, my name is, as has been indicated, Alanda Terrelang. I'm the Minister of State in the Ministry of um, Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport. And it is really wonderful for us all to be discussing today this very important connect of Kingston and what Kingston means as a city of music, a city of culture. I mean, really the creative hub, I would like to think of, of this side of the Atlantic. And of course, our partners in the EU um, Kingston, as you know, you know, has been designated a city of music for quite some time now. And it is our hope that as the years go on, that Kingston, and not just Kingston, but other parts in Jamaica will also share similar designations. We have been working with several partners, um, not just in the EU, but we have several bilateral arrangements, which facilitates a wide network of activities across Kingston, um, you know, music festivals. Um, one, one thing that comes to mind readily is our partnership with Mexico, and that led to the creation of several, mus um, several murals across the city of Kingston. 
Um, and so in this regard, there are a lot of twinning opportunities, you know, to twin Kingston with, with, with other cities across the world. And so, for example, with our ambassador being placed now in Brussels, you know, we're looking forward to, let's say, twinning opportunities with Brussels, twinning opportunities with, 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 with Paris, um, you know, London, Madrid, across all the, our, our, our um, member states in the EU. It is important for us also to gather the information about our creatives who are in Europe who are doing amazing work. I mean, you know, we have the Rotterdam Festival that happens, which is one of the biggest reggae festivals in the world. Um, I recall recently, um, not recently, a few years ago when I learned of the festival in, in um, I think it's in, in, in India, there's a reggae festival that happens all the way in India, which is one of the biggest reggae festivals as well. You know, so it really is a great opportunity for us to be linking with our partners in the EU. We in Kingston, we're looking at the final designation of entertainment zones as well, because what we envision for Kingston is a non-stop activities that the last 24, 24 sevens. When you look at countries like Germany and Madrid and Germany and Spain, they have zones and they have entertainment zones and clubs that go until 10 a.m., 6 a.m. I mean, starting at, I mean, it's it literally a 24 hour vibe. And that is really what we want for Kingston within these specialized zones where the entertainment, the life of the city, it continues. And again, not just for Kingston, but across Jamaica, but of course, starting with Kingston. There's also our entertainment registry at the ministry, which provides important information to our creatives who register with us. And it also provides them with tools of trade and everything, and also to help them, you know, to get grounded within the sector and what happens across Jamaica. And so, again, you know, it is our pleasure to be here this morning and to be working with our partners across the EU. And we look forward to this continuation. Thank you. Excellent. And we can go straight ahead to Ambassador Betanayo. Thank you very much, Mrs. Thomas Gilbert Roberts. It's a pleasure to be here in the company of the practitioners, players in the field of culture and, uh, and the creative uh, industries. I am, uh, as you mentioned, the ambassador here in Brussels. Even though Jamaica has a physical presence in two EU member states, Belgium and Germany, we of course have multiple accreditations. So I'm also accredited to five other EU member states in addition to serving as head of Jamaica's mission to the EU. The European Union is a strong partner, has been a strong partner of Jamaica for, for many years since we uh, became part of the uh, organization, well, the ACP group, now an organization of African, Caribbean and Pacific group of states in 1975, the EU has been a strong, very strong partner in Jamaica's own development uh, um, in, in, in pursuit of our development objectives, culture being an important part, because as you know, the cultural and creative industries play a critical role to the country's uh, national development. And so we have been advocating for, as a, as a uh, head of mission, we play an active role in advocating for uh, additional support or, to Jamaica, to Jamaica's cultural and creative industries. And we have established the framework, various frameworks exist for the support to be delivered to Jamaica. Mention has been made of the OACPS EU, Organization of African, Caribbean and Pacific group of states and the EU, we have an agreement, a partnership agreement in place. It has just been renewed. It was a, a new agreement has been uh, initialed between uh, the organization and the EU. And that agreement is to be signed, but it has been initialed. And culture is an important component of that agreement. And we have another framework, the uh, a trade and economic framework, the economic partnership agreement. And in that agreement, we have provisions on a cultural cooperation protocol. No work has commenced on it, but of course we are not where we would like to be, but at least we have the frameworks in place for the cooperation with the EU to be, to be enhanced. And so we have been playing a critical role as the mission uh, in providing information to stakeholders in Jamaica and to ensure that the interests and the, the strategic interests and priorities of the country are adequately reflected in programs and activities being 
uh, undertaken, including within the framework of the organization of uh, ACP states. And, uh, and so that's the critical role that I play and the team in, in, in the mission when we uh, receive information from the EU, for example, calls for proposal because most of the EU support to the cultural and creative industries are um, channeled through positive responses to calls for proposals. Uh, mention has been made already of the, uh, to the, the transcultural program that is also an important program. The, the uh, minister council at the delegation mentioned that it's a program that is valued at 15 million euros. And it's a program that is dedicated and targeted at the uh, Caribbean countries. So there are many programs and we look, look out for those programs and ensure that they are channeled to the right stakeholders. So um, that is a critical role that we play here in the mission to ensure that the interests and the needs of Jamaicans in this particular area are also taken full into account. Thank you very much. Excellent, thank you. And now we welcome Mr. Gian Giuseppe Simone, who has gracefully stepped in uh, in the final moments as Ms. Aya Kasasa was unable to uh, participate due to an emergency. So uh, welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Stephanie. Do you hear me well? Very well. Perfect. Uh, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, uh, good morning and greetings from Brussels. It is a really a huge pleasure to be with all of you and to share our common passion as underlined by the Madame Minister for Culture and Creativity. So I'm um, Gian Giuseppe Simeone, as it has already been uh, uh, mentioned. I am an expert in uh, cultural and creative industries and the role in a balanced and sustainable human and social development. And I'm working mainly for various EU programs active in these sectors, uh, both in developed and developing countries. And I am currently the team leader of the Technical Assistance Unit, providing support to the organization of the ACP states and the EU in managing the ACP EU culture program. But I have the pleasure to represent here uh, Mrs. Aya Kasasa, uh, who is expert in culture, migration, urbanization, demography for the organization of the uh, Africa, Caribbean and Pacific states, who unfortunately could not be with, with us uh, this morning due to, uh, to, to family reasons. So on behalf of the OACPS, uh, I thank you for this opportunity to participate in this founding event, which is the result of a very, very promising and innovative research and process to highlight the importance of culture and creativity in such a vibrant city as Kingston, in Jamaica as a whole, and in their relationships with the, the EU and the world. The organization of the Af African, Caribbean and Pacific states, as already highlighted by the Madame the Ambassador of Jamaica in Brussels a minute ago, has placed the cultural and creative sector at the center of its strat strategies for the sustainable development of its member states and their integration into the global economy. The sector, universally recognized for its potential for inclusive economic growth and human welfare, has proved particularly resilient despite the devastating cons consequences of COVID-19. The cross-cutting nature of culture and creativity has, uh, al uh, has also allowed them to reach out uh, to as many people as possible and to raise awareness of the fundamental values of our society, such as the promotion of human rights and the culture of peace, fighting inequalities, encouraging women's leadership and youth participation, as well as focusing on the needs to take into account environmental sustainability and the challenges of climate change, all aspects that are at the heart of the OACP missions. In this context, the OACP uh, uh, carries out coordinated advocacy and support actions in close collaboration with its strategic partners, and in particular with the European Union. 
and mainly through a specific funding and support program called ACP EU Culture towards viable cultural industries, which has been already mentioned several times, and on which I will come back uh, later on in our discussion. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, Ms. Lena Ingerson. Yes, hi. Thank you, Stephanie. And uh, I'm also very excited and very honored to be here um, on behalf of the Music Cities Network as the managing director. And I greet you and I salute to all of you, excellencies and colleagues and practitioners who are here with us today. Um, in my introduction, I will talk a little bit about the Music Cities Network and what we're doing um, and a little bit about me. So what we are doing is uh, with the Music Cities Network, we have created a worldwide network uh, between music cities, which is dedicated to improving communication, collaboration, business, arts and policies. Who is doing it? The network was initiated in 2016 by Sound Diplomacy and Hamburg Music, which is the lobbying body of the music companies in Hamburg and in Germany, and legally established just now in the early January 2021. The new association is based in Hamburg, but acts and works transnationally um, and has appointed me as the managing director. Our members have been, um, and from the beginning, it's been a growing network. It's Aarhus in Denmark, Bergen in Norway, Berlin in Germany, Gothenburg in Sweden, Groningen in the Netherlands, Hamburg in Germany, Manchester in the United Kingdom, Nantes in France, Reykjavik in Iceland, as well as Sydney, who has, from the beginning on has been one of the founding members. Why are we doing this? In the light of the ongoing pandemic and the existing challenges in the global music industry, I mean, all the challenges have become even more visible than they have been before. That is why we as the Music Cities Network see cultural exchange and facilitating platforms for creating innovative solutions and sustainable change as more important than ever. And we're seeking to do this with our partners. The mission of the Music Cities Network is to improve communication, collaboration, business arts and policies, as I said, between music cities worldwide. Our mission statement, you can say, is that the global eye needs a local body. And that is what we're doing in different projects and aims. How are we doing it? We are aiming to create more exchange business opportunities locally as well as internationally. The network actively designs hands-on solutions to bridge the gaps between music scenes, city marketing, as well as policymakers. Further, the MCN seeks to get decision makers and politicians to sustainably acknowledge that music is an integra integrated part of city development. And we do this through networking, knowledge exchange, advocacy, joint music business development, joint presentations of music city ecosystems, city marketings and tourism on different conferences worldwide, such as South by Southwest, the uh, Reeperbahn Festival, or also the Eurosonic Festival in Groningen. We are seeking to shape music policies. We have collaborative research projects as well as a growing database. And uh, something that we very much enjoy doing is project development and fundraising. At the moment, we have two European funded project within the Music Cities Network. One is called the European Music Business Task Force and the other one is called the Linka Bureau Connection. The first one is bringing together 12 emerging music industry professionals with the aim of finding answers to no other question than how we can booster European music within Europe. And the Linka Bureau Connection brings together 12 emerging hip hop and R&B artists from all around Europe to co-collaborate, but not only just that, but also in creating a manual and mapping the music scenes throughout the cities, which are Manchester, Berlin, Groningen, and Aarhus, to learn more about the hip hop scene and finding the gaps and working towards connecting the dots there as well. A little bit about me, as I think it's always about people as well, what we're doing, and I think we are all a bit, or all of us, we are in it because we are having passion for the music and the culture industry. Now I'm working as the general manager for the Music Cities Network. I have a master degree in culture management. I'm as well a DJ. I'm an innovative in the European Key Change Development Program as well. And since 12 years, I have been able to work in the music industry. And in the meantime, I'm 
I'm fascinated by creating sustainable change and shaping the future of tomorrow's music and creative industries. And I think that all brings us together here. I'm very excited to be here to exchange further. Um, we are a growing network. We are member-based network. So every new, every new member that comes in brings new energy, brings new ideas, brings new challenges that we can tackle all together to create a better future for the music city ecosystems. And yeah, I think that's all. I'm very much looking forward to the further exchange. Excellent. Thank you for that introduction. And we pass the floor to Ms. Rosina Modea. Rosina? Rosina, I think you are muted. Rosina, you need to unmute. Okay, here we are. So I'm sorry for the delay in the unmuting. I'm Rosina Christina Moda. I'm Austrian born. I'm actually a recorder player, um, but I came here to Jamaica. It was 37 years ago on Bob Marley's birthday, February 6th, that I'm here. I am a adjunct lecturer at the Edna Manley College School of Music. Uh, here in Kingston, where I have been teaching since 1985, since my arrival. And um, I'm also the founder and executive co-founder, executive director of Music Unites Jamaica Foundation. In with Music Unites Jamaica Foundation, um, I, we are focusing, have several missions. One is on, on offering free concerts and free workshops island-wide. And uh, this has been always made possible uh, with help from embassies. For example, I see the representative of the French embassy here. Uh, thank you also for helping us in the past. And, and the German embassy has helped us tremendously with, uh, with putting on concerts all over Jamaica, including in Seaford town in Westmoreland. And uh, we also have focused on offering scholarships to talented and needy students. This year, we have been grateful that the Belgium embassy here in Kingston has uh, sponsored a, fully sponsored a student to finish her final year at the School of Music. So we are, we are basically channeling the funds, yes, and, and organizing the funds to make those activities. We also embarked on the first ever research on Jamaican composers. We are shifting off a little bit from the view that Jamaica is only reggae. Jamaica has so many other music forms from folk music, the rich folk music history, to, to uh, religious music, to, to jazz. And, and we have found maybe, maybe about 30, 40, 30 composers who have written music in classical, in patriotic, in music for theater and dance, music for pantomime and so on. So we are researching those uh, Jamaican composers. And we, uh, with, this, with this project, I am presently involved with a, with a big uh, collaboration with my Austrian embassy here, who has the office in Ottawa, um, because this concert brings together my, the city where I studied Graz in Styria in Austria, together with Kingston, because we will be uh, offering a, a free concert at the Kingston Parish Church, which will be a launch hour concert here on the 29th of March, coming up soon. And at the same time, it will be streamed between the two churches, the Kingston Parish Church here in Kingston and the Maria Hilfe Kirche in Graz, in Styria, in their series of Abendmusiken. So we will have music by Samuel Felstedt, the first ever documented Jamaican composer, and from 1743 to 1802. And actually the 29th of March was chosen because it's the 220th anniversary of his passing, where he was the organist in the Kingston Parish Church. So it's a very historical moment, a historical place. And, but we also feature a contemporary Jamaican composer. His name is Peter Ashborn, music by him. So it's one from the past, one from the present. And I, I need to uh, humbly uh, mentioned that Beach Ashman is also my husband and I kept my maiden name because we're two artists. And uh, by the way, Beach Ashman has written the first ever reggae opera in the world, which is actually the next point I will co be coming to. So we have this concert streaming between Graz, Austria and Jamaica, the National Choral in Jamaica, of Jamaica will, is celebrating 50 years. So we have lots of celebration. This National Choral will be concluding the concert here in Kingston with the grand chorus of Samuel Felstedt's oratorio Chona, another part of music history. This oratorio 
is documented to be the first ever oratorio written in the entire Western Hemisphere. So the first Jamaican composer has written the first oratorio in the entire Western Hemisphere, which was published in 1775. So there's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of uh, fonts we need, on the, and uh, which is actually the, the hardest part. Do, 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 do create the projects. Yes, it's a lot of work and a lot of communication, a lot of passion, a lot of knowledge, but the funds is always very, very, very crucial. So we are really, I'm really grateful that I have been invited to this, to this panel discussion because we are, after this concert, we, I will be focusing very much on the, on the um, first ever staging of this first ever reggae opera. Since opera came out of Italy, yeah, so it's a, it's a, it is coming from Europe and reggae is Jamaican. And we are, my husband, Beach Ashman, he wrote a reggae opera. So we are hoping that we could hopefully premiere it somewhere in Europe, maybe in one of the European cities of culture and closely collaborate between Europe and Jamaica in this reggae opera project. Thank you very much. I'm honored. I greet everyone, and uh, I'm uh, and of course all the excellency in post greeting. And uh, it, it's an honor, and I'm hope, looking forward for the collaboration. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, thank you so much, Rosina. Uh, Dr. Roberta Cominion. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Perfect. Yes, I'm Dr. Roberta Comunian. I'm based at King's College London and I'm a reader in creative economy there. And uh, my, my background research, there are quite a lot of different projects uh, focusing on developing creative economies, both uh, in the UK, but also internationally. And I think the ones that more closely connect with our discussion are uh, a recent project that Stephanie and Comedia are involved with called DISHE, Developing Inclusive and Sustainable Creative Economies, uh, which really looks at European cities, but really uh, questions a lot of what is the creative economy and who is included. The, other project I've been involved with has been a research network across uh, um, Africa. And uh, this has been uh, very much um, looking at African creative economies in three cities, Lagos, Cape Town, and Nairobi, and looking specifically at the role of intermediaries within those cities and how they support local creative economies. And I'm um, very happy to be here, obviously, and learn about Jamaica, which has not been one of my uh, the countries that I have researched. So I'm looking forward to learn more from all of you, but also to share, obviously, what might be useful for your context in reference from my previous research. Excellent. Uh, in the spirit of cross-collaboration. Uh, and Dr. Kim-Marie Spence. Hi, everyone. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good night, maybe. Uh, so I, I'm um, Dr. Kim Marie Spence. I am a lecturer at Queen's University Belfast in cultural policy and cultural industries. Uh, um, it's inspired by, I'm a Jamaican, and inspired by my um, previous work in Jamaica as a film commissioner and head of creative industries. So was previously, um, as um, Honorable Minister Green said, home team, still home team. Um, I'm also a, a, the arts and culture expert on the Global Jamaica Diaspora, Diaspora Council and was invited here as a representative of Kingston Creative, which is a uh, um, grassroots um, arts and cultural district initiative. That's the very short way of saying it, um, coming out of downtown Kingston. Um, I'm a director and you, you will have the pleasure of our executive director in future sessions. Um, it is part of, an, of action research for me. Uh, I've, Having studied the um, cultural in the, the cultural industry, specifically music industries of the Northwest, looking at K-pop and reggae and the cultural policy apparatus that supports or does not support them, um, I moved into creative cities. And so, in this presentation, 
in on this panel, I'll be drawing from both Kingston, which I see as part of patriotic duty and action research. You know, um, having been in the government before, um, do the research, love what I'm learning, and I'm grateful to the Kingston Creative Family to have the opportunity to translate that learning into action way faster than my journal articles can. Um, I'm also sharing learning from um, the other cities I look at, like Seoul, um, uh, having been based in Southampton, I also look at Southampton. I know that's um, Roberta's home territory um, and Mumbai. And now I am in a city of music, just uh, Belfast. And so that has been interesting in seeing the, the parallels, having been part of the very, very preliminary um, drafting team for our own application, our being Kingston's application to the City of Music. So I'll be talking from both an academic perspective and also being part of a team effort um, as Kingston Creative, supporting that from the third sector, the creation, and not the creation, but the strengthening of the creative ecosystem of Kingston, Jamaica, and the Caribbean. Um, I, I should note, I really like the, the title of this Connecting the Dots, because a lot of what has been done, just what comes out of my research, um, and also what has led, has supported the growth of Kingston Creative, has been about connecting dots from private, public, and third sector to create and continue to grow. Excellent. Thank you so much uh, for that introduction. Uh, fascinating panel that we have today. Uh, so I'm going to start with some questions. Honorable Minister Terry Long, as we consider efforts to drive the development of Kingston as a sustainable and inclusive creative city, what would you say are the major factors and mechanisms that could be most effective in really supporting this enabling environment? Thank you so much. We had a creative Okay, uh, Minister Terry Long, the connection is is a little broken. Uh, we are perhaps uh, we will, uh, Minister Terry Long, can you are are you there? Okay, so um, you're coming in and out, yes. Okay, so uh, are you hearing me now? Am yes. I still coming in and out, or it's a little shaky? But we're hearing you better now. All right, let me let me apologize for the internet connection here in Kingston, Jamaica. It's not as creative as we would like it to be, or maybe it's too creative and it's doing its own thing on and off. But um, right, let me apologize for that. All right, so, so two weeks ago, um, we had the Creative Expo, and this stems from the world of National Culture Creative Industry Council, the ministry. And their function is to bring together the multifaceted and, and, and all the talents that we have here in Jamaica across the ECI, uh, the gamut of the ECCI. So two weeks ago, we had this um, expo in Jamaica and we exposed over 175 young Jamaicans. We had them in a room for an entire day panel discussion with persons like Solomon Shah, Brian Lumley. Sorry, we have lost you again. The creativity is taking its toll. Um, so I'm sorry, um, Minister Terry Long, perhaps um, we can come back um, to this question at a later time, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, I'll, I'll go to Ambassador Betanayo. 
Jamaica has three diplomatic missions in the EU, Brussels, Berlin, and Geneva, as you previously introduced. Please introduce the role of diplomatic missions in the EU and outline the main mechanisms available for advocating for promoting Jamaica's CCIs and encouraging strengthening the collaborative potential of Jamaican creatives within the EU. Thank you very much, Mrs. Thomas uh, Roberts. As mentioned earlier, well, the, the mission has a critical role to play, a critical advocacy role, and we have been playing that role bilaterally with the EU or individual EU member states for that matter, or bilaterally with the institution. And uh, collectively with CARICOM and the Dominican Republic, because we are part of one single arrangement with the EU where culture is a, a, an important component of that arrangement, as well as within the framework of the OECPS EU arrangement. So there. There are many, many fronts, multiple fronts, on which we are uh, seeking to address the, the issues and, and interests of Jamaica in these two particular areas, bilaterally, bi-regionally, and, and of course, within the, the frameworks of the various uh, um, arrangements that we have in place. But I, I wanted to focus a little bit on the, on the cultural cooperation protocol of the, of the economic partnership agreement. It is a key of key strategic imperative, given Jamaica's strong comparative advantage in the cultural industries and the importance of the, the EU market. Prior to the pandemic, I came across data suggesting, for example, that the film and audiovisual sector of Europe was worth 121.7 billion euros. I, uh, we, of course, all know that the pandemic has uh, affected the of the industries badly, but there are strong signs that they are rebounding. And the same exists, for example, for the music industry as well. The data pre-COVID also suggests that uh, that, that um, particular industry was contributing uh, significantly to the economy across Europe. I think it was Minister Grage who mentioned that a number of the festivals that Jamaican cultural practitioners participate actively in have started, will resume this year. We know, for example, the Reggae Heal Festival in Ingheel in Belgium will be staged this year from the 4th to the 6th of February, uh, sorry, August. It is also an important festival because that festival, a number of creatives, Jamaican performers participate actively in that a festival and they, they move to ply their trade. And so this notion of being able to move mobility is very critical in this post pandemic period. And the embassy uh, continues the advocacy to ensure that the measures that are put in place will facilitate uh, cultural practitioners seeking to move to ply their trade in the European market, which is quite val uh, lucrative even in this COVID period, there is a desire, strong desire on the part of many of the organizers to resume their various uh, activities. And uh, this is a market that um, Jamaicans are quite interested in. It's a market that uh, comprises of four, uh, over 450 million consumers. And they are consuming Jamaican cultural products and services. And so we want to see a return to this market Minister Grange mentioned the importance of this market and we want to underscore that. And so the embassy is playing that critical advocacy role. And we are looking at the various uh, instruments. The, the representative of the delegation mentioned a number of instruments and we hope that um, our cultural uh, practitioners and creatives are taking uh, full advantage of them. We're here in the event that there are challenges in accessing them. I know sometimes I mentioned earlier that access to them are, um, is largely in the form of positive responses to calls. And sometimes there are challenges in weaving through the various requirements, but we have a role to play in assisting. If there's need, for example, in, uh, for, for support in uh, writing quality proposals and responding to calls, then the, the mission can assist in identifying um, uh, opportunities. For, for you to be able to respond positively to those calls. 
So the mission is playing that advocacy role and will continue to play it because we understand the value of the uh, creative and cultural industries to Jamaica. It has already been quantified some time ago. I know time perhaps for it to be reassessed and revisited, but it has been quantified and it has been shown that the both industries contribute perhaps uh, in an equivalent way to the economy, to the GDP of the country, similar to other industries like agriculture, et cetera. So there's no doubt about that. In addition to the positive sort of spillover effects that, um, that the both industries have and other industries, other sectors, for example, tourism, is a tendency to believe that it is the spillover from tourism to these industries, but the, the, the spillover also goes in the other direction. And so we are mindful of all of these developments and um, we are looking, uh, we have our radars out and looking for opportunities to share with uh, Jamaica to ensure that um, post, post COVID uh, and in looking at the building of our resilience or seeking to recover from the pandemic and to build the resilience of the, of the of the industries that we identify opportunities for, for Jamaica to do to do exactly that. So, so the mission has that critical role to play. And I'm pleased to see that um, the Euro European partners are present with the delegation and individual member states, because as I mentioned, in addition to pursuing support avenues for cooperation and strengthened partnership at the level of the European Union. We're also seeking to do that bilaterally with individual member states. So we're pleased that they are present and we will continue to collaborate um, to ensure that the interests of Jamaica are taken fully into account. Thank you very much. Excellent, thank you. Connecting the dots uh, in motion, fantastic. Uh, Honorable Minister Terry Long, you are back with us uh, on another device, I believe. Yes, I am back with you on another device. And again, let me apologize. But you know, this is a great opportunity for a partner, the EU, to um to perhaps assist us with, with, with some of our with some of our internet challenges, you know, fiber optics and all these wonderful things that I'm not very familiar with. But I've switched devices. Um we've actually had a power cut. So the internet on the laptop has now gone. All right, but so I, as I will tell you, so we have a new council, which is called the short version the Jamaica Creative, and it's their role at a level to enhance and to boost all our creative at the local level. We are now partnering with major players, and again, when we think of the creative industry, you know, it's not just about yes. While Kingston has been designated as a city of music, it's more than music. It is it it it, it, it is also it is also food. It is also fashion. It is also I mean all different all varying forms of entertainment, which includes our local film industry. And so we have commissioned the very best of the best across all the East ECI sector, and we're now twinning them at the local level with our youth, tertiary students who are studying the full gamut of the ECCI. And um, so, so and what we've done is two weeks ago when we had this expo, we've awarded 60 scholarships to 60 young Jamaicans to study with the very best of the best. I mean, fashion, TV, media, animation, architecture, film, and the list goes on. So what we're doing is we're building out the next generation of super creative Jamaican talents. So I want to thank the ministry team who spearheaded this because it really is a great opportunity. Of course, also at the broader level, we have a city task board, which has been established at the at ministry. And they coordinate, again, much of the entertainment culture aspect that we will be doing. Um, I mentioned earlier that we have also the entertainment registry, which provides important incentives, um, you know, for all our young musicians. And I mean, even some of the older ones as well. We are looking at twinning with, with, with other cities as well. I mentioned the project that we've done with Mexico in terms of murals 
Um, of course, you know, there is, there is um, every single ambassador who comes to Jamaica really wants to focus on how best we can look at cultural cooperation agreements, agreements in, 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 in music, agreement in for food and film and all these wonderful things. So we are building brands right here at, 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 the, at the local level to put reggae and also our music and, the, and, and, um, and, and, and the food and film fashion across Europe. Um, we also partner with, in terms of fashion, we also partner with the Embassy of France and um, France and one of our local international I mean, it's international. They have the most model, the most black models across the world. You know, I mean, models such as um, Tammy Williams, um, who is just one of the local superstars um, at global level. And again, with our is this Okay, I think we lost uh, Minister Terry Long, um, but we we see that it there the depth. Um, and width uh, and breadth of collaborations um, and just how far Jamaicans um, are around the world and within Europe, um, you know, promoting the culture of Jamaica and engaging on that level. Um, so Minister Terry Long, thank you so much um, for, that, sure. um, for that intervention. And uh, just a quick, um, a quick segue, um, because Miss Ingerson uh, is going to be leaving us very shortly, and I would really like her um, to share with us considerations from the network's experience that may be generally applicable to the development and leveraging the creative cities with a strong music ecosystem such as Kingston. And uh, Minister Councillor Eckfeld, I would like to come back to you because I see that your hand raised, um, but I would like to give uh, Miss Ingerson an opportunity um, before she has to leave. So thank yes. you. <laughs> thank you, that is so considerate of you. Um, I was imagining me, uh, I can also, I would tune in from my phone in a second, I have to catch a train, I'm sorry, <laughs> going up to Aarhus. Um, but uh, in terms of the network and in the preparation talk, we talked about the music ecosystem and what that could mean for a city and what it is actually. So what I think I would like to elaborate on is uh, three things. It's uh, thinking about a little bit with you what a music city is, uh, what key strategies a music city could incorporate and also map the idea of the music city ecosystem. So that is three things I just wanted like to share my knowledge or the experience that I have. And I think that's what it is about as well, sharing the knowledge and gaining more insights to, to be able to find better arguments and pushing these topics forward. So um, for me, the music city, it will, it will never be a fixed term in itself. It is a concept. It can be a community of any size with a vibrant music economy. It can begin with the artist, but also with the music businesses. Um, a music city is home to a broad range of professionals who support artists, music entrepreneurs, and in every stage of the career. Um, and also it's fostering a live scene with an engaged and passionate audience that provides artists with a fertile ground for developing their craft. So I think that is definitely, it. with every city that is part of the Music Cities Network, that's something, you know, that is the essence and it's incorporated in the city, but it will never be written down in a way of, you know, I'm a music city now, but it's something that comes internally. It's seen like a concept and also like a, like a process. Key strategies for us as the Music City Network members um, that we all agree on is uh, that we aim to create music and musician friendly policies around and in the city. We aim to set up music offices that can be supporting organizations that are working with the scene, in the scene, with every member city that we are, for example, there is the city that is supporting the network, but as well a music organization, like, for example, there's the name Promos in Aarhus, they are working with the music scene, somebody that's connected to the music scenes, um, music advisory boards, engaging the broader community, providing access to spaces and places diverse audience development. And last but not least, very important and interesting and everyone or a couple of speakers mentioned it as well as music tourism and the interlinks between those areas of music industry and the music tourism. 
And uh, what I'd like to elaborate as well about, yeah, what is the music ecosystem and how can this be understood? So the question is who's responsible for music policy in a city? And when we are looking at this or at a, at a, um, at a graph, there is a music city manual from Sound Diplomacy that was published in 2019, if that is also free to download. They have made a lot of great groundwork uh, in the name of also Shane Shapiro, who also brought me here today. So thanks to him if he's listening. <laughs> um, but also, I just wanted to elaborate on the fact that there are so many different stakeholders coming together to create this vibrant scene, to attract new talent, to keep the talent as well. So we're talking about music organizations. We're talking about promoters. We're talking about accountants. We're talking about international audiences. We are talking about investment companies. We are talking about so many different stakeholders that form a music city ecosystem. And being aware of this or educating and striving for this is something that we are working towards for because it is about, in the end, it's about education and it's about understanding what the worth is worth and acknowledging it um, that we all need music and culture for a better city life. I could elaborate forever, but um, maybe. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you so much. And we do hope that you catch your train. So thank you I'm so much. I'm running now, for but being... I will tune in from my phone so <laughs> and hope to engage in the discussion. Thank you for. Yes. Thank you so yeah. much for your time. And over to Minister Exfeld. Thank you. Well, uh, no, int int no intention to, to come in and uh, talk, talk so much uh, with all these uh, uh, specialists in, in culture, but uh, Minister Talon. Uh, uh, it spoke uh, about the European Union and maybe what we could do together in the field of digitalization. And I want to see this opportunity to reconfort the minister that uh, in the next coming uh, five years, digitalization is going to be one of the main collaborative uh, pr uh, programs that we will have together with, with Jamaica. So uh, it is a uh, one third of uh, the, uh, the, the common cooperation for development in Jamaica would be uh, in the field of, uh, of digitalization. So, uh, and that is up of utmost importance for, not for these kind of exchanges, but also for the crafting, for the dissemination and for the promotion of culture also. We know how important uh, platforms are nowadays in order to, to gain uh, wider audiences. And uh, uh, so uh, great prospects here also and great synergies between culture and digitalizations ahead in the context of EU Jamaican cooperation. Thank you. Very, very important. And again, connecting the dots, fantastic. Uh, so thank you, thank you all. This is this is very engaging. Uh, I invite uh, Mr. Simone. Uh, the ACP is a main advocacy platform for Jamaica's cultural and creative sector players to have a voice. Can you share with us a bit about the work of the ACP and its policy framework, and outline some of the main programs that seek to create an enabling environment for culture and creative industry stakeholders to access the collaborative potential of the EU? Thank you very much, Stephanie. Uh, to, to provide some elements for an answer, I would like to, uh, to, to remind this historic partnership between the OACPS and the European Union, which has been recently renewed as uh, uh, somebody uh, among the panelists uh, mentioned earlier. And this covers many fields of activity of strategic importance for the development of the ACP countries, among which culture plays a pivotal role, as it is now widely recognized at international and national levels. So the, the OACPS uh, visions and strategy for culture are reflected in, I would say, the main instrument, uh, the main operational instrument, which is the ACP EU culture program, uh, which has been mentioned also already several times. Uh, a program which is uh, launched for the period 2019 to 2024, and which is managed by the OACPS with funding from the EU. 
So this funding instrument uh, builds on the results of almost two decades of previous joint action between the ACPs and the EU in the field of culture. And uh, its approach uh, is based on the lessons learned from these past experiences. Uh, the program has an overall budget of 40 million euros, which makes it one of the biggest programs in this, in this field. And it aims to make culture a viable option for young generations in ACP countries by strengthening the cultural and creative ecosystems, uh, creating an enabling environment for entrepreneurship and the autonomy of professionals, and boosting creativity and innovation. Uh, the aim of the, of the program is to give uh, artistic and creative talents new opportunities to increase their income, to use new technologies uh, to benefit, benefit from stable and quality jobs, and to promote better access to national and international markets. Uh, it is important to support them in these transitions with a particular focus on ending inequalities and also to boost women's leadership and youth uh, participation. To this end, uh, two support mechanisms have been put in place thanks to the program, uh, which inaugurate a decentralized system of cascading funding based on a constructive partnership with international, regional and national organizations, which are active in supporting culture and which are closer to the realities of the ground and taking, adva taking advantage from this empowerment also to build their own competencies. Uh, the first uh, mechanism, the, the first scheme, which has been launched in 2020 uh, with a global budget of 10 million euros, aims to support audiovisual co-production in ACP countries. So uh, South, South uh, cooperation schemes or South North co-productions and these for feature films, documentaries, and series. And um, uh, the, the, the scheme works by completing the budget of well-established audiovisual funds, which issue several calls for proposal each year for audiovisual professionals and complement their own funding with an ACP bonus, which can double or even triple the grant. Uh, the second mechanism, which has been launched one year later in 2021, with a budget of 26 million euros, supports the ACP culture and creative sectors as a whole, so all sectors of, of, of culture, by funding six, six regional hubs composed of international, regional, and national organizations specializing in culture and creativity, one for each ACP region. According to the same cascading grant approach, these hubs publish at least once a year a call for proposals for cultural operators on the ground in all field, fields of culture. Uh, just to mention it, the hub covering the Caribbean region, which is called Creative Caribbean, uh, managed by the consortium made by UNESCO, uh, the Caribbean Community CARICOM, and the University of West Indies should publish at least two call for proposals in 2022. So uh, all information will be on our website in uh, due time. Uh, the results of this decentralized support mechanism are already tangible both in quantity and in quality, as 90 audiovisual projects from Africa, the Caribbean and the Pacific have already been supported for a global support of more than 3.2 million euros, while an equivalent, uh, equivalent amount of 90 projects in all fields of culture have received a substantial funding from the regional hubs for a global budget of more than 7.5 million euros at this stage. And we hope that the coming years will bring even better outcomes. However, beyond funding and figures, these mechanisms are also focusing on strengthening the capacity of cultural operators by providing, providing networking opportunities, technical assistance, professional training and mentoring aimed at, at ensuring more qualitative and sustainable outcomes for the projects and ensuring that by working with people, the benefits of the program extend beyond the duration of the funding and take root over time. And the program, through its uh, communication and advocacy activities, is also aimed at focusing on, focusing on dimension, dimensions which are key for the balanced development of our society, 
such as the promotion of dialogue, tolerance, inclusivity, citizenship, and the empowerment of traditionally undervalued groups, such as women and the youth. Uh, I will stop here in presenting this program, and uh, you can uh, always find more info on our website, which is uh, www.acp-ue-culture.eu. So, and don't, don't hesitate to ask questions also uh, during the, the, the panel. Thank you very much. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Very important mechanism um, in this conversation. Uh, I turn the floor over to Dr. Comunion. In your work on inclusive development of cities, can you explain what an inclusive city is and give us background on what are some of the key factors to consider in the evaluation of a sustainable city? Yes. So uh, firstly, um, just to say, it's very obviously hard to define one, to provide one definition of inclusivity. Uh, but uh, uh, what I think is really good to reflect on in relation to creative cities is how inclusivity needs to be translated both in terms of inclusivity to participation, so to people consuming and taking part and just enjoying, obviously, any cultural activity that the city is uh, promoting or presenting. But on the other side, we also have to think about inclusivity in terms of who, who gets to be an artist, who gets to create, who gets to propose content, who gets to present ideas. So I think these two sides are really important and some cities are really good on one side but ignore the other and some others are good on the other but they, it's important that these two sides are both present because they really also provide an ecological and connected opportunity for those things to interact. Uh, so from my research is really uh, much more looking at the production side. So looking at how uh, inclusive creative work is or how inclusive creative industries are. So how easy is it for people to be uh, included in, within the sector and be able to create themselves. And I think here there is a lot of uh, different steps at how we think about the opportunity uh, for people to take part actively within creative economies. And, you know, it is, these steps start very early on. And probably, you know, even when we are children, you know, the kind of access that we have to opportunity to enjoy, to experiment, to, to try out things is really an important right, an important basic opportunity that has got very important also connection with labor later in life, we, are, we feel confident to continue to create, to continue to take part in creative economies. So in our research, we saw, uh, we see around five stages within that, in these elements of inclusivity, from the early years where people have access and people are able to experiment, to where people might, because they've been encouraged when they were young, think about this as a potential career for themselves. So at that point, there can be other barriers to inclusivity. Sometimes these are financial. So accessing education, for instance, university can be obviously a barrier for many. So the way skills need to be made accessible is also part of that inclusivity agenda. And once somebody has graduated or is enough, you know, has enough skills to enter the creative economy, to work in the creative economy, again, how inclusive is that sector? How able are people to to interconnect, to get a job, to get an opportunity, to be able to make a sustainable living out of their work. So not just do unpaid internship or, you know, work for free or work really terrible, in terrible work conditions. So that influences a lot the agenda of inclusivity, because if uh, those jobs are not well paid, if those jobs are uh, not, the people are not treated very well in those jobs, then the people who get to do the jobs are only a very restricted uh, part of our society. They won't represent the voice of everybody else in the society too. And finally, we found also that in this uh, agenda for inclusivity, as I said, a lot of uh, an important role is played by intermediaries. And sometimes uh, we found that these intermediaries are actually people that have worked in the creative economy, but have come out of it to actually support more people to be creative. Because it feels like a lot of people obviously want to contribute directly, but a lot of other people feel that actually their agenda is not just about contributing to the creative economy, but also encouraging people to be creative and others to 
have a career and opportunities within the creative economy. So all those dynamics, all those people, organizations, societies, uh, associations, trade unions, all of those organizations that try to break barriers and try to encourage people on crea in creativity are really, really important uh, for local creative economies and to make them more inclusive. Uh, to address the last part of your question, I think uh, I would like to refer to some research that uh, colleagues uh, at King's College are doing on something called the Cultural Development Index, and this is particularly led by Professor Nick uh, Wilson, and I would be happy to share any more information with people who are interested in that. And it's the, this Cultural Development Index that really challenges the way often we are measuring now development, uh, very based around, obviously, uh, whether it's the human development, development index or whether the other form of index, uh, things that we own or things, opportunity that we have in, to make a, a livelihood, but really ignores what are the measures that can tell us about how much people are happy and how much they're able to express themselves, to actually think what's important for them and take part, to take, empower themselves, to create, to contribute uh, to their local culture, to uh, really uh, be able to have the ability to contribute to society through what they value, whether that's music, whether that's other uh, creative forms. Uh, so uh, I think we still have to develop more of that uh, uh, data collection that tells us about how important it is for people to be able to access culture, but to also themselves be creators and be happy that they are contributing culturally to the society where they live. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Cominion. And we know, we know that you um, are, are a little bit short on time um today so we thank you very much um for spending the time with us um and uh, we will we can continue this discussion and perhaps in other forums so thank you very much um i would love to hear dr spence's uh remarks uh in considerations in the same considerations uh so it's uh, you know it's interesting to hear um roberta speak uh so because i come at it overlapping but from the other spectrum I think definitely coming from the global south i.e Jamaica myself uh my research tends to look at sustainability um and sustain but in inclusivity from the point of view of the livelihood so she um Roberta very rightly talks a lot about the um the, the 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 value of creativity, cultural human rights, and you talk about arts and arts programs in schools, but especially for me, you know, one of the things about inclusivity is: can you make a living from it? Can you survive on it? And if you can't, then that that taps into issues of then only those who are supported in where whether family, whoever who their spouses are, whatever, are able to participate in the cultural economy um, and there are different aspects of livelihood visual versus music but coming from a kingston creative perspective kingston creative interest represents one of those intermediaries it's a it's an organization not to produce cultural um, expressions itself, but more to promote a creative ecosystem across the whole breadth, whether it is visual arts, dance, food, literature, as its themes have shown. Um, one of the things I would want to add from the Jamaican experience, which I have been studying about and um, writing on, um, is the importance of partnership. In an experience, in a, that, that livelihood question means opportunities to create and be paid for that creation locally. And then some of the things that the government has been doing in the wider environment. When you're coming from the global south, the local economy is one, but also the ability to move beyond. And so you find that the, the partnerships that have that are part of the Kingstonian thing, the partnerships with the communities around, so just the residential communities, the partnerships with different creative organizations that do produce culture, but then all facilitating a platform to translate that into murals, translate that into art walks, to translate that into various events that those different creative communities don't themselves 
have to produce. Um, another aspect I would add of the global south as um, the global south situation um, beyond just considerations of local, international, or even better transnational is also the importance of the diaspora and brain circulation. Um, I see it, it pops up not only in my Jamaican research, but also in my research on K-pop. A lot of um, K-pop is, is the K-pop talent behind the scenes comes from the, the Korean diaspora. Um, similarly in Bollywood, you see the importance of the diaspora, both as um, the diaspora's audience as in as sources of investment and sources of talent, whether in front of the screen and behind the scenes. And you see that very clearly um, in Kingston, but as I'm representing um, Kingston Creative, you see that very clearly, the, that circulation in terms of the, the opportunities by those who work in the diaspora and the linkage back to Jamaica and just in that way, creating a transnational Jamaica. I will also note that um, policies for a creative city and an inclusive city, um, in addition to some of what Dr. Communion mentions as you know, arts programs in schools, encouragement opportunities, a lot of the cultural facilitation policies aren't just cultural policies. You're talking about issues, and I was happy to hear uh, Minister Terry Long mention entertainment zones. So of course, you know, Kingston Creative is create, you know, is supporting the creation on the ground, but also designation of an art district. So having, so you're talking about policies that are not just arts and cultural relation, but policies about space and venues within a city. You're talking about policies about licensing, things like company registration. So how easy it is for creative to um, form a creative enterprise. So you see that in some of the Kingston Creative initiatives, it's not just about Kingston Creative becoming bigger, but also fostering our platforms through initiatives such as the Creative Hub, where people learn about the administration of creative entrepreneur, entrepreneurial initiatives. Um, and so I would say the inclusive policy from that end of the spectrum has to do with creating an environment where um, at the risk of using mouth quote, a thousand flowers can bloom. So you have the government working on ACP, EU partnerships, issue, very real issues of mobility and partnerships with those external to the country and, and, and laws about venues, noise abatement, etc. But you also have to create an environment where different creatives feel, I can get up tomorrow, be a creative and not starve. I won't have to marry into money to continue to be uh, creative. And so um, policies to support that third sector, the Kingston Creative, the Dancers Jamaica, um, the Music Unite Festival, so that they can tap into resources as needed. I will end with the resources. A lot of the discussion has been very government focused for good reason, but there's also, um, supporting money going into the creative sector from, from the private sector. Uh, Kingston Creative has benefited from private sector partnerships and big and large from, you know, it's not just the big companies, just across the spectrum of the private sector. And what has um, worked in some of the cities, for example, I'm here in Ireland where there are three UNESCO creative cities Dublin, Galway, and Belfast. Um, one of the initiatives is about um, making, you know, investment in cultural industries um, a write-off for the tax incentives for it. We see that that what that has done for, for for the film industry of Trinidad and Tobago. So it's not something that's not that's unheard of within the Caribbean context. And so that is also a, an aspect of getting private initiative in because as we well know, um, Global South across board, um, 
public sector resources are very limited. And so those would be the um, those would be my comments um, about the inclusive city from the point of view of artistic livelihood. If you can't make a if you can't make a living out of it, then you're in de facto limiting um, creativity to some. Uh, we're lucky in the Jamaican history that our cultural innovators, particularly in music, have found a way. But should it just be find a way? There are um, practices and mechanisms that can be put in place. And you know, I, as a representative of the Kingston Creative Family, um, in partnership with government and private, because I I should note that um, one of the first uh, funders or so financial supporters of Kingston Creative was um, the Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sports. I think that was the name at the time. Um, so there is a role for those partnerships, which is why I like the connecting the dots. There are lots of dots to connect and they're not solely arts and culture dots. There are also venue policy dots and licensing dots and diaspora dots. Thank you. Very practical, very comprehensive. Thank you so much um, for all of those very important contributions. I now invite Rosina um, to speak a little bit from the perspective of her grassroots organization, Music Unites Foundation. Um, tell us a little bit about some of the sustainable outcomes of activities um, that you have done over the years and, and perhaps shed a little light from a very personal perspective on some of the challenges that you have faced. Okay. Um, thank you for the, taking me by surprise. <laughs> All right, I will uh, hopefully make uh, uh, some sense. Uh, as I said, 37 years to look back on, on, on my staying in Jamaica has been, you know, very intense, very positive in so many, in so many aspects and very challenging in other aspects, you know? So the positive, I think one of the most positive moments I had, and I, I, I keep remembering it is when we went on an all island concert tour in Anglican churches, the offered concerts in Anglican churches all around Jamaica from, uh, from Port Antonio Christ Church to, for example, in the cathedral in Montego Bay. And after the concert in Montego Bay, a beautiful, senior lady with a stick and her church had she came to us and she said miss you have to come back and play music again for us don't you think we don't like the music you play we just can't get it enough please come and bring it back that that made for me such a happy moment more than a, a big loud round of applause after a well-played concert so that that means there's a yearning in the in the people of a country to get a variety yes so so this is what we have been trying to do with it this is it all island concerts uh, all over jamaica and with uh, thank god with, with sponsorship because we have made sure that it's what i mentioned that it was offered free of cost so there was no money boundary no limit for the for for to attend these concerts we also of course did uh, with, in collaboration with the JCDC, the Minister Jamaica Cultural Development Commission, we did all island workshops. In my case, it was more focused on the recorder because I, in addition that I, I am organizing all these things, I am still a recorder player and teach recorder. And I wrote a book called the Two 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 Book. When I came to Jamaica, I saw this old English publication from 1953 being used in all those schools with boring, boring educational outlines. And so I, I immediately sat down and wrote a book, which a teaching book for the recorder, which includes uh, a lot the Jamaican and Caribbean folk songs, and of course the Anglo-American nursery rhymes, but in a, in a very hopefully entertaining way it has space it made space for the national anthem of jamaica it made space for writing in other national anthems so it is a, a book for the caribbean on which acdc i went all around the island uh, to give workshops teachers especially for teachers i'm also an early childhood music educator and uh, with the american friends of jamaica we got assistance to to give 
music workshops, how to integrate music into the lesson plan of an early childhood classroom. That shouldn't be, this is music, on this goes the dance. It shall be all integrated, poetry, music, the visual arts integrated in a playful way in the age of the early childhood. And as I said, thanks to the American Friends of Jamaica, we, we did workshops in, out in the, in the country and all in different uh, regions, you know, the, the re educational regions, and also here in Kingston, we did a long training session on recorder, on conga drumming, on the guitar, on, on vocal training for early childhood music educators. It comes out of the my first training as an early childhood music educator as well. And we got, thank God, lots of lots of help in this and uh, collaborated with the Ministry of Education, the Early Childhood Commission there. And then um, we did, as, as I had mentioned already, um, this collaboration with Austria, as I said, um, I, I forgot to mention it before. What is the reason for this Austrian-Jamaican connection now is I, uh, I'm so much I'm a, I'm a, I have a mentor, his name is Professor Nicholas Hanunkur. He died, he was my professor in the Mozart in Salzburg. And he, any music he performed was researched. He has seen the original, he taught us to go behind to, to ask questions. And so when I heard that Jamaica had a composer from 1773, I, I, I went a, a little bit wild over it. So I organized a, a music symposium uh, also, with the help, now comes my big sponsor, private sector. Thank you, it was mentioned before by Kingston Creative, the private sector, we must not forget. Even we beg and we beg, but some do give. And, and uh, Music and Nature Maker Foundation got a big help from the JN Foundation, Jamaican National Foundation, in researching this, the first research on the Jamaican composers and we together with the JN Foundation, we were able to organize a big music symposium, the first music symposium on the lives and works of Jamaican composers in 2016. And we brought here this Argentinian, you see, connecting the dots, Argentinian German recorder player, composer, arranger, Professor Manfredo Zimmermann, who is a specialist on Baroque music, and he, did the mammoth work of orchestrating this first oratorio by Samuel Felstedt, this, this the oratorio of Jonah. He, it was first written for two tenors, choir, and an organ, but now he made a whole orchestration of this work with the chamber orchestra. And it was then thanks to the German embassy again, we brought here an, a, a choir and an orchestra from Germany, from Speyer, and, and and collaborated with a Trinitarian tenor who did the lead role, Edward Cumberbatch. Yes, so, so we do try to connect those dots uh, ongoingly. And we performed this first orchestrated version of the Oratorio Jonah here and all around Jamaica. It started in the Kingston, in, in the University Chapel, in the St. Andrew Parish Church, where the piece was written here in Kingston. So, and thanks to this initiative, Manfredo Zimmermann, Professor Zimmermann, he has now published for the first time the entire oratorio on his website and also those six organ entries. Those are the two works being left or, or known of Samuel Felstedt. So it's first time available to be bought all over the world. This, this oratorio can be bought and the six organ pieces can be bought on the website. It's called Ornaments Music. I can put it in later into, into our chat. And now I was thinking how to celebrate Samuel Felstedt's 220th anniversary of passing this coming March. So then I realized that his organ pieces have not been ever recorded for YouTube yet. So I asked my friend, Franz Zebinger in Austria, who played with me in my Baroque music group before I came to Jamaica. He actually already accompanied me when I did my exams, my master's concert. He, I said, why don't you uh, record for me this, this Felstedt voluntaries? He knew about it because he assisted Manfredo Zimmerman by editing, make sure no mistake is in the, in the publication. He said, sure, yeah. I said, find the Baroque church, find the Baroque organ and record it. But then the money had to be found. So then I asked my long childhood friends, long time big company in, in, in Syria, the company is called Saubermacher. And I said, 
don't think I'm begging you, but maybe you know another company who would who would sponsor those the, the recording of those six organ pieces. And little did I know, so said so done. It was sponsored by my friends, by the company Sabermacher for the first time. And in this concert now, we are in Austria and in Kingston. It will be the same time we are launching this recording, the first recording. So uh, it it has been um exciting. I, I don't I don't want to miss a, a, a moment in Jamaica because it's hard as it is to work in culture, especially outside of the reggae on dance or scene. It is a bit of an uphill struggle, you know. We are bullied, call it so, but we're not afraid of the bully. We just keep going. <laughs> and and um, thank you for the opportunity to speak. In two minutes, I sure will be upset and think, oh, I forgot to mention this and I forgot to mention this. But I think I did mention the major. Uh, the major outlets of my cultural life here in Kingston. And uh, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to present it to you. Okay, thank you so much, Rosina, um, for speaking about the diversity of music. Um, of course, we are the home of reggae. So, you know, we lead with reggae and we're proud of reggae. Um, and um, we embrace it. And one of your initiatives, which is so tremendous, um, is the reggae opera, where you are, are building yes. on this concept yes. of combining yes. two yes. homegrown yes. Um, types of musical output to produce something yeah. that is fantastic. And that's a true spirit of um, this type of collaboration and realizing that we have a natural advantage because this is homegrown and indigenous and it becomes strong, but there is room see, for the multiplicity um, and diversity. So thank you so you, much. You see, you brought me back to the reggae opera, but I, I want to mention what we're hoping in the reggae opera is to, to perform it in Europe Yes, with collaboration with, let's say, a music university in Europe. We bring the reggae band over to teach a European you know, jazz department, you know, how to, how to play the reggae band in the reggae opera. But that we need the orchestra from Europe to, to, to participate. And so the Jamaican director, the Jamaican choreographer, the Jamaican reggae band will go there, of course, the, the conductor, and then we will have the input of the orchestra from a university and of the choir and, and some you know side side roles and of course the set design and uh, so so it shall be really a very beautiful intense collaboration hopefully in the making thank you for reminding me thank you so much and as we close this session before we close i would like to invite participants uh, to complete our event survey um, before you leave the meeting. For those going into the other sessions, there will be another opportunity to do this. Um, but for those who are only here for the opening session, we ask you to complete this before leaving. Thank you very much. And it, uh, I also want to underscore that um, this intervention, this project is uh, brought to you by the cultural relations platform um, of the Service of Foreign Policy Instruments of the European Commission based in Brussels, Belgium. And to highlight an open opportunity um, for Jamaican professionals through the Global Cultural Relations Program, um, a flagship training program that aims to connect cultural professionals from all over the globe. And we will put the links and information in the chat um, for all who are interested. I believe the applications are still open now and will be open um, until the end of March. Um, so definitely there was a Jamaican in the last cohort um, and let's hope that we continue to fly the flag high um, as we normally do and really embody this cultural exchange. Um, so thank you again and we just wanted to really underscore um, that cultural relations platform is behind um, this effort. Okay, and so to close, I invite the Honorable Minister Terrelong, um, if he has any last words um, to, to leave us with. All right, thank you. Well, you know, just to note that the globally, the creative industries is valued. The last UN estimates I saw put it at over $2 trillion annually. It really is a massive industry and one that Jamaica stands to benefit from. When we think of, um, you know, Kingston being designated, you know, um, as a city of music, and we think of the inscription of reggae, 
you know, at the, UNE at the level of UNESCO, it gives me a lot of hope that our creatives will benefit more from this multi-trillion dollar industry. Um, you know, so there are greater ways that we can collaborate. Um, you know, when I think of the, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, the festival, the, the Rotterdam Reggae Festival, which is in Spain, you know, that really is now sort of like the, the it, it has somehow become the mecca of reggae festivals, you know, and whilst we have Jamaican artists like Chronics and Savannah and others who, who continue to perform at these festivals, you know, we need to consider how can Jamaica benefit more from this. When we think of the global space and, and how it has been transformed into sort of um, a virtual reality, how can we leverage the virtual world in, 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 in more collaboration of these festivals, whether we're looking at Guam in India or we're looking at Rotterdam in, in, in Spain and, and so forth. And even at the local scene, when we look at the, the productions at the JCDC that they do, you know I mean? And we have our popular song competition, you know, reggae has, you know, so Jamaica has pretty much weaned reggae in, 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 if, if you understand what I'm saying. So reggae is, it's the product of Jamaica. It, 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 is, our, it is our culture, our history, it, 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 but, but it does not only belong to the people of Jamaica. Reggae now belongs to the people of the world. You know, and then we have the offshoots, we have the EDM, we have the, we have the reggaeton, which is absolutely popular and completely amazing. You know, we have Afrobeats now, which has taken the world. I mean, it's, it's a global phenomenon. You know, so how, how can Jamaica and Jamaican creatives benefit more from cross collaborative efforts? Um, what about doing a global, you know, in, in partnership with our EU partners? How do we, let's say, have a festival now that, that has the best of our homegrown reggae mixed with reggaeton, mixed with Afrobeats? And we look at now the sort of global, um, you know, reggae and all the offshoots kind of collaboration. So these are some of the things that we're thinking of. These are some of the things that we're hoping that we can achieve and using the virtual platform so that we can benefit more. And um, I mean, and as the discussions continue, we look at, uh, you know, I mean, what, 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 what reggae and, and, and what the creative sector does for our industry here, because the truth is tourism in Jamaica, it's a product of our creative industry. Without, I mean, visitors the world over, they can go anywhere for sun and sand and sea but they come to Jamaica for more than that. Yes, we have some of the best hotels in the world, but they also come for the food. They come for the music. They come for just the people. You know, they come to hear the Irie and Jarastafari and Wagwan, man. You know, so it really, it, it really is a lot to look for. And as I've said, with the virtual world now being at everyone's click, just a click of a finger, it, it, it gives me renewed hope as to the future of the creative sector and also as an income earner for our local creatives. Um, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much um, for bringing that home. And I see uh, a hand raised from Ambassador Betan Nair. So I, it would be a miss of me to not open the floor. <laughs> thank you. Thank so you much. very much, Mrs. Thomas, uh, Gilbert Roberts. I didn't want to speak after minister. Protocol doesn't dictate that I speak before the minister. But I wanted to take the opportunity to, to just flag a point that minister raised regarding twinning and to inform the meeting that that work has commenced on a, a possible twinning arrangement between uh, Kingston, uh, well, Jamaica, there was a, a separate city, but I believe it perhaps there's an interest in Kingston, Kingston and, and Heel, Heel, Heel in, in Belgium, where one of the, the, the larger reggae festivals, um, it's normally hosted in that city. So work has commenced. I can't say much more about that, but there's a bilateral discussions have uh, commenced on it. And I just, since I have a few of, uh, my diasporans, representatives of the Jamaican community in, um, uh, in Belgium and in France. I can't end, but, um, but just to, to, to mention as a, a notable Jamaican music scholar reminded us at the Embassy's Reggae Month event last Friday, held last Friday, that the dias diaspora or diasporans are vectors of cultural transmission. And, um, through the various activities that they undertake. And we are, I have seen that in among diasporans uh, um, in, in communities within the embassy's jurisdiction. Uh, some of whom have established uh, restaurants, for example, in Amsterdam, in, Amsterdam, in the Netherlands, in Antwerp, in Ghent, uh, Antwerp and Ghent in, in, in Belgium, and uh, which have been patronized by 
by non-Jamaicans. So they have also assisted with the cultural uh, diffusion. And nationals have uh, staged a, a number of festivals in Paris. Uh, and in fact, among the celebratory events for Jamaica 60, the 60th anniversary of Jamaica's independence, are various activities, are festivals to be staged in Brussels, in Paris, and Amsterdam. Uh, and, and importantly, the minister mentioned the reggae festivals. Uh, I, 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 I want to draw attention to the reggae heel I mentioned earlier, because you have some Jamaicans, for example, in communities close to heel, um, and they are providing a suite of auxiliary services, including catering services to um, those festivals and also to Jamaican performers who, move, who travel to Europe to ply their trade at these festivals. So Jamaican uh, uh, entrepreneurs have sort of built an industry around these activities and are providing and have provided a suite of auxiliary services. So the transmission continues. And I just wanted to raise that issue. I don't want to end the meeting without bringing that important element, the role of the diaspora in cultural transmission. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much. Um, this was such an important um, this is such an important uh, intervention and discussion today. Um, we look about with Talawa, and <laughs> we are here um, to really engage um, beyond our shores. We have such rich cultural heritage, such rich infrastructure, um, just ready um, to develop. Um, within our own communities, but also to embrace this global economy and to embrace our European connections and to use, um, you know, to mutually benefit from collaborations, um, from future, from future endeavors, from innovative um, practices, um, you know, in terms of even music innovation, just a, just a little um, note. EDM, um, electronic dance music is heavily impacted by reggae, <laughs> um, you know, and even when you look at those, you speak about diversity, you speak about influence, you speak about, um, you know, really leveraging the best of Caribbean and Jamaican and um, culture, indigenous culture coming out of Kingston. So thank you very much to our esteemed panelists. Um, it was a quiet and engaging and we will continue. This is the first in our series of events. So we intend to go deeper into a lot of these issues um, as this goes along. Um, we will be having our next event uh, speaking about creative financing um, for the industry uh, next week, Monday, the 28th, uh, the 28th of, of March. And before, just the last, before I close, I invite Dr. Um, Hick Hickling Gordon, if you'd like to say any remarks at this point. Before I, we segue. <clears throat> I think a great deal has been said. Um, and, and so I'm just really gonna close very quickly to say that there is a full range of activities happening in Kingston across the public and private sector. There is a whole ecosystem involved in the process of um, Kingston's creative city development and its, and, and, and its advancement. There's a full range of practitioners programs, intermediaries, there's festival, there's events, there's schools, there's Edna, there's university, there's, um, and all, all of the singers and dancers and makers of, of, of music and all of those, all of the individuals who are involved in, in programmatic activities. And I want us to acknowledge um, those individuals who are working really hard within Kingston Creative City of Music as we sit here. I also want to say that many things are not perfect. We've heard a lot about the things that are going well, but we also, as a part of the process, need to determine what some of the difficulties are. And we're going to be looking at some of those things in the session uh, sessions later. So I just want to thank you for participating. As Stephanie said, next week, we're going to be doing creative financing, our creative financing um, forum. And we, it's, it will follow the same format as this one, where we have the, um, we have the breakout sessions at the end for those who register for them. And then in March, we're going to be having a grand stakeholder event where we have four major themes. We're going to be, it's going to be over two days and lots of excitement. Minister has promised us that she is 
going to um, take a leading role in, in ensuring that, that all the dots are connected. And, um, and, and we know that the, the, the EU is making great plans for that participation. And of course, um, our team at the, um, the uh, CRP, the platform, which has a, a mission to strengthen the EU's ability to engage meaningfully with different audiences and stakeholders um, in, in, in partner countries through enhanced cultural relations and cultural cooperation. So we're going to move into in the next section and we thank everybody, absolutely everybody who made this um, the place to be on this Tuesday morning as we all work together um, to, to, to move um, Kingston, Kingston's creative city of music forward and all of the Jamaican ecosystem. I'm very clear that Kingston is not Jamaica, but it's an important part of um, Jamaica as its capital city. And we have to map all of Jamaica at some point. Um, thank you very much. Um, Stephanie, um, over to you. Okay, excellent. Uh, before I close, I would just want to ask if the minister, uh, Minister Grange, uh, I see your camera is on. Um, would you like to uh, to say any last words? Just to, just to say this is wonderful. I thoroughly enjoy the interventions, and um, we have started now to connect the dots. And I think that we are on the right track and we are going to have great results. This is really awesome. And I want to thank everyone and to say to the practitioners here in line that the future looks good. And the more we work together, the happier we shall be. So as, as Bob Marley would say, everything is gonna be all right. So one love, one heart, blessings. Excellent. Thank you so much. And so for those of you who will remain, we are going to enter um, into our sessions and be allocated. Um, we just remind for those who are leaving, if you can kindly fill out the survey. Um, and we really thank our panelists as we segue into these closed sessions to really look deeper into some of the issues that are on the table, to have open discussions um, and to see if we can ideate together and co-create together um, to really deepen our connections and connect the dots. So the three sessions uh, today will be, the first one is on designing inclusive creative cities, looking at infrastructure Structure, city planning and community uh, trust. And I will be hosting along with uh, Andrea Dempster Chung, Executive Director of Kingston Creative. Session two will be looking at strengthening collaboration between European and Jamaican ecosystems. And this will be expertly facilitated by Dr. Mariel Barrow and Ms. Kerri-Ann Henry. Um, Dr. Mariel Barrow is creative development consultant um, and the founder of Caribbean in Transit. Ms. Kerri-Ann Henry is vice principal of administration and resource development at the Edna Manley College of the Visual and Performing Arts. The final topic will be on protecting Jamaican culture while increasing access and promoting collaboration. And this will be facilitated by our lead consultant on this project, Dr. Deborah Hicklin Gordon, um, UE coordinator of the bachelor's program in cultural and creative industries and entertainment and cultural ent enterprise management. Um, so we thank you. Uh, we thank you so much uh, for everyone that's been here. And we, we look forward to seeing you in the breakout rooms. All right, so what good for those who are leaving us and see you on the other side for those who are staying with us um, and joining the sessions for more in-depth um, analysis.